My name is Neil Peterson. I'm a cloud advocate with Microsoft working in Azure. Um, hello, thanks for coming out. If you were in my last session in this room, hello again. Um, this, is, this talk is entitled Governing Your Azure Environment. Um, what we're going to talk about here is really controlling access to Azure resources, um, controlling how Azure resources are configured, and then doing all of that at scale. Um, so, you know, prior to jumping into the tech, what do we mean by technical governance? And, and that's a pretty broad term. Uh, really, these bullet points are scoped to this talk. There's potentially other areas of, you know, topics of interest when we, when we think about technical governance. But you know, the first thing we really want, really want to talk about is, is controlling access to Azure resources. Um, that is, you know, potentially some examples might be giving, you know, my IT department access to read and create and delete these resources, but maybe, uh, you know, a specific application department only the ability to create resources under one specific resource group. And what we'll see is that uh, access control goes well beyond just read and delete. Uh, we can get very fine grain with the access control, such as perform, you know, the ability to perform only a specific action on a resource. Um, so once we've, you know, once we've kind of uh, come to terms with how to control access to resources in Azure, we then want to consider controlling how those resources are configured or you know, ensuring that we've, you know, are applying standard configurations across the resources in our environment. And in some cases, just denying the creation of resources if the resource requests are not conformant to our standards. Um, and then finally up here, we've got controlling and managing costs, um, a big, you know, big topic. Um, and we've got a little bit of that. We're gonna see a little bit of that in, in demo. Um, and why I personally think this is really important beyond just the obvious, right? We can't have people inadvertently deleting resources or creating a ton of resources because if you think about it, you know, as we move to cloud computing, we ha now have this new power. And that new power is the ability to just create virtual machines or create storage accounts on demand, whereas we used to have to kind of go through a process to get that stuff. Um, so beyond the obvious, you know, we don't want our organization just creating as much resources as any configuration as they can. You know, we want to put controls over that. But my own personal opinion is that we also don't want to like stop innovation. Um, you know, cloud computing is relatively new. And in my opinion is that the more and more we use it, the better we get at using it. And the better that we get at, you know, building solutions that empower our company or our organizations to do more, um, so, you know, I hesitate to say like, hey, let's just stop everybody from doing anything, make everybody go through some sort of change control system because that kind of stops innovation. Um, so I want to empower my organization to experiment and play inside of our cloud computing environment, but I need to enforce this type of stuff to make sure that we're doing that in a, a responsible way. Um, so. To hit up all these kind of topics of technical governance, we're really going to look at three pieces of technology in this talk. And like I said, there's others, but we're going to, we're going to scope this talk down to these three pieces of technology. And the first of those is role-based access control. And this is pretty simple. I mean, this is just you know, defining roles within our Azure environment. Uh, we've got a bunch of predefined roles, such as you know, reader, uh, owner, but defining roles, which is you know, what I want to give my organization the ability to do, and then applying those roles or assigning those roles to users or groups. Um, and again, this is not just about read and delete. Um, the particular demo that we're going to see, you know, we're going to give somebody the access to restart a virtual machine, but not delete the virtual machine or not create a virtual machine. So we can get fine grain with these role, with role-based access control. The next one is called Azure Policy. And this is the piece that allows us to define what our standard configurations are. And then with this, um, with Azure Policy, we can do a bunch of different things. Uh, for instance, we can audit uh, our current deployments, the current resources in our uh, subscription and just kind of take inventory. Like, how do we currently stand against all of these policies? 
But we can take it further and do things like um, deny the creation of things. Like let's say somebody's trying to create a VM that's just like super duper 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 expensive. Like you would only use this in really unique use case, which our organization does not do. So let's just deny the creation of those resources, which is, is huge when you look at cost. Um, so that's the Azure policy piece. And then finally, um, we wanna be able to manage role-based access control and policy at scale across all of our subscriptions. You know, the, the, the further we get into this cloud journey, I mean, we're seeing organizations that have just a bunch of subscriptions and, they're, and for very good reason. And you don't wanna have to control access and control policy at a subscription by subscription level. That just, that, that's inefficient, you're gonna miss things. Um, so we wanna be able to do this at scale. And for that, we've got something called Azure Blueprints, which is currently in preview, uh, but, but, but it's moving along pretty quickly. Um, we're gonna see a fourth piece of technology just briefly. It's super duper simple, so I didn't uh, make it a big bullet point, but this is Azure Management Groups. Um, and this is just a way to group all of our subscriptions into a single entity. Uh, so this is the technology that we're gonna, we're gonna look at. I've got a few slides, bunch of demos, um, and let's get started. So role-based access control, um, pretty simple. I've already talked about, uh, talked about it quite a bit, but this is really just the, you know, the authorization system that provides that fine-grained control to Azure resources. Um, we wanna be, you know, be able to build groups and, and segregate the access that they have. Um, so uh, you know, this group, there's a very good reason for you to go in and read the data or read, you know, be able to visualize and look at the resources in Azure. We give you, you know, read access. However, you, we want you to be able, or this group to be able to create and delete stuff. So RBAC gives us the method to create those definitions and assign them to users and groups. Um, as I've already mentioned, we can get more fine grained than that. So all Azure resources have a set of actions and we can, you know, scope RBAC definitions to those specific actions. Uh, so the example that I've already talked about and we're actually gonna see in the demo is, I don't want you or your group to be able to create virtual machines or delete virtual machines, but I do want you to be able to restart virtual machines. Um, there's a bunch of role-based access control definitions already created, uh, pre-created in Azure, um, but what you're gonna find is that, you know, you're gonna get to a point where you need to create your own, and you need to create custom definitions. And that restart virtual machine, that, that's an example. And we're gonna see that in the demo. We're gonna actually create a custom role definition, assign that out and see how that works. Um, we can grant, you know, we can, we can manage role-based access control uh, at the user level, at a group level. But I also wanna throw it out there. I mean, this is something to think about, but we've got this concept of um, service principles or managed identities in Azure. So if you've got like an automated system that's doing something in Azure, uh, you need to give this system an identity. And, and for that, we can create these things called service principles or managed identities. And now like, a, let's just say I've got a, a job that's running scripts against Azure every night. Um, rather than that job, you know, having the identity of me or a real user, we provide it with a service principle or a managed identity. We also wanna think about controlling access to those, just you know, in the event that you know, that identity is compromised somehow. Um, so not only can we scope role-based access control to users and groups, but also these, these managed identities or these service accounts as they, they would have been known before in, in uh, Azure. So that's the overview of RBAC. Um, kind of getting a little bit into the weeds, but we'll see this more in the demo, is just like what, what makes up role-based access control? What are the pieces that I'm dealing with, like the tangible units of, of uh, compute that I'm managing when I'm building out role-based access control rules? And there's basically two. There's a role definition which just defines the access level, and then the role binding, which is to take that definition and bind it to a user, a group, or a managed identity. Um, and we're gonna see both of those in the demo. Um, and like I said, a few slides and a bunch of demos, we're gonna jump straight into a demo here. Uh, so kind of the, the scenario for this is that Tailwind Traders wants to limit a group of accounts to have read access plus the ability to reboot virtual machines. 
Um, so there's a couple things that we're gonna do in this demo. We're gonna actually take a pre-created RBAC definition and we're gonna assign that to a user using the portal. Um, but we're then gonna go ahead and create a custom definition using PowerShell and assign that to a user using PowerShell. And really I wanted to show kind of the portal way of doing things and then the automated way of doing things because ultimately if you're you know, doing this stuff at scale, you wanna start looking into some sort of automation like PowerShell. Um, so that's the two things that we're gonna do in this demonstration. And I'm actually gonna do kind of like a before and after. So we're gonna kind of, we're gonna move slowly through this. So right now I'm logged in to Azure as myself and I've got, I'm an owner of the subscription. I've got all the rights to everything. I'm actually gonna log out really quick and log in as Rebecca and just see, you know, what, what does Rebecca have access to right now? And then we're gonna work through a couple different scenarios. So right now I can already see that things aren't looking good for Rebecca. If I click in on resource groups, there is nothing there. I can't see anything, but I can tell you there are resource groups that exist and resources in those resource groups in this subscription. So to kind of meet that first goal, I wanna give Rebecca access to read everything in this subscription. So I've logged out and I'm logging back in as myself. And let's just ensure I can see everything. And yep, there's my resource groups. So I now wanna go start managing Rebecca's uh, access. So there's a couple different places that we can manage access control inside of uh, Azure, but I'm gonna kinda go to the main area. So I've clicked on subscriptions here and I'm gonna click in on my subscription. And then up here, we've got access control, and I will uh, click on that. Now, uh, just a real quick tour here. We've got role assignments and roles. Um, so this is basically those role definitions that I talked about. And this is you know, where we're defining what, what, what does this role definition give you access to. And you can see there's quite a few in here, and a lot of them make sense, or some of them make sense. Owner, contributor, reader, but then we've got some that are very specific. And I know that might be hard to see at the back, so I'll just do my best to kind of talk through what we're looking at here. So Azure Kubernetes Service Cluster Admin Role or BizTalk Contributor. So some, some very specific stuff in here. All of this is pre-created for you. Um, let me just pop back to role assignments. And then in my environment, we can see that I have just one role assignment, that's myself and I'm mapped to the owner definition. So I now wanna go ahead and create an assignment for Rebecca and give her reader access. So I'll click on add, role assignment. I will select the role of reader. And then let me find Rebecca. Click save. Pretty simple stuff, but like I said, we're gonna take it further and we're gonna look at some automation capabilities as well. Um, so there we go, we've got Rebecca, she's a reader. Um, so let's go ahead and log back in as Rebecca and see how things have changed at this point. Already we can see a bunch of resources on this dashboard here. Um, let's click on resource groups and go find a virtual machine. There's a virtual machine in a resource group called Demo VM. And there's my virtual machine right there. And let's just make sure I didn't mess up um, and try to delete the virtual machine. And we can see right away, boom, it stopped me. And I know the message is a little hard to see, but what it's basically stating is that, yeah, this user does not have the delete action for this type of resource, which is a virtual machine. So we've, we've been blocked from uh, deleting that virtual machine, which is, which is good. Not only do we not want to have Rebecca delete that virtual machine, but it would really mess up the rest of my demo if, if we had deleted that virtual machine. <laughs> but let's say, you know, go further. We do want Rebecca to be able to restart the virtual machine. So let's just see what we, what, what's going on there right now. And it's basically the same thing. So we've denied Rebecca the ability to restart the virtual machine, which makes sense at this point because that's not part of the reader role that we've given her. Um, so that's good. All right, so let's go ahead and log back in as myself. And let's work through now giving Rebecca a little bit more access, specifically access to restart that virtual machine. So I will go back into subscriptions, go into my subscription, access control. Um, let's go back over to roles and just quickly look through here. 
and, and, and look for a role that matches my needs. So I'm gonna come down to virtual machines and we've got virtual administrator login, virtual machine contributor, user login, but nothing about restarting. Um, if I go like up to the R's, there's nothing there. And, and, and basically I can you know, just guarantee you there's nothing in here that gives that specific role. So we're gonna need to, to create that. Um, and to do so, we're gonna use PowerShell. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Cloud Shell. If you've not used Cloud Shell, it's a, a terminal built into Azure. So we've basically got um, a, a shell environment here. We've got a bunch of tools, the Azure CLI, PowerShell, other tools that aren't related to this talk, such as like Docker and Terraform, all built into Cloud Shell. Um, I'm auto-authenticated to my uh, subscription. Um, it's a pretty neat environment for, for doing automation. Um, so I've got a folder pre-created in here. And we're back. And so in this directory, let me actually just uh, move that up. I've got a couple different files, and these are JSON files, and this is the role definition. This is the, you know, this is defining the role that I want to create within Azure that I can then uh, assign to a user. So let me just go ahead and open up a code editor in here, and I'm going to open up this one VM restart. And so there's quite a bit going on in this JSON file. We're not going to look at all of it. But the first thing is we've got a name. So what do we want to name the role? In this case, restart virtual machine. Is custom is just a property we need to set when we're creating custom roles, just to indicate that it's a custom role. A description, um, let me show you this. Let's see. So each one of these uh, role definitions in here has this little exclamation point that I can hover over. Um, that's what this description is. So if I wanted to, you know, kind of just give some details about what the role's gonna do, like as they get more complex, this one's pretty obvious, but you could build some complex ones. It's that description where you're just gonna kind of define that information. And then what we really wanna focus on here is this actions piece. And these are the actions that I want to give uh, this role. Now there's a little bit of redundancy here in how I've done this demo, uh, but, it, but it's okay. Um, specifically like, the first action I want to give is virtual machines read. So the ability to read all virtual machines. Well, Rebecca already has that access. She can read everything in, in, in the uh, subscription. So some redundancy there, but that's okay. Uh, the next action is to, so we've got virtual machines start, then virtual machines restart, and then read all resource groups. And again, that's a little redundant. But you can see here, I'm able to go in and just get very fine have fine-grained control in the actions that I want to give uh, whoever I assign this definition to. There's a couple other things in here outside of the scope of this talk. Uh, not, not actions, data actions, not data actions, and assignable scopes. We've got uh, really good documentation on all of this, uh, so I'd encourage you to check that out as you get into this. Um, so there is, there's the role definition that I want to create. Again, it's a JSON file. I'm, uh, I've given it a name, a description, and define the actions that I want to take. So let me go ahead and close down my editor, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, create this. And I've just got a couple little notes to, for me just to make sure that I don't fat finger anything. Um, so the command, I'm actually using an Azure CLI command here to create this role definition, and the command is az role, or az role definition create, dash dash role definition, and then I've just given it the name of the JSON file, which I'm already in that directory, so um, I didn't have to like give a path to the JSON file. So I'll go ahead and run that. All right, and uh, so when using the Azure CLI, uh, the default output is in, formatted in JSON. So there's just a JSON uh, response here, uh, but it should say in there somewhere that the, the operation was successful. Uh, but at this point, all we've done is created the definition. I can now go and, like we've discussed, I can go and assign this to users, groups, or other identities within Azure. So let's go ahead and do that. Got another command here ready to go. And for this, we've got az role assignment create, dash dash role, and then the name of the role, which was restart virtual machines, dash dash assignee, and then Rebecca's identity. And I'll go ahead and do that. 
All right, so that looks good to me. Uh, but just to validate, let's come back in here and go to role assignments. Yep, and so we can see we now have a third role assignment uh, for Rebecca and the restart virtual machines role. And again, like there's the description that I had provided. Um, so that I think looks good. Let's log back in as Rebecca. Let's go over to my resource groups, demo VM. There's my virtual machine again. And once again, just to make sure I didn't mess up, let's try to delete it. Failed, that's good. And then let's try to restart it, which failed last time. But this time we can see it's going through. So we've given Rebecca that fine grain control that we've been talking about. So that's role-based access control. Very brief, uh, very quick. There's a lot you can do with it. Um, like I said, as you're thinking about role-based access control, it's not just about read, delete, create. We can get fine-grained with that. Uh, we've got portal experiences. We've got PowerShell. We've got Azure CLI. We've got REST APIs to manage this stuff at scale with automation. Uh, so the next thing we're going to look at is um, policy. Let me go ahead and close that out. I don't need it anymore. And get back to our slide deck. So once we've, you know, once we've kind of gotten a hold of access control within Azure, we now want to really want to think about how we deploy stuff, like how we configure stuff, um, ensuring that we're not doing dumb things like using machines that are more expensive that we need. Or, um, for instance, maybe we want to make sure that all virtual machines have a specific virtual machine extension attached to them. If you're not familiar with virtual machine extensions, they're basically like a, a binary that we can attach to a virtual machine to perform some sort of action. Uh, one example might be to configure antivirus uh, solutions. So maybe we want to ensure that all virtual machines in our environment also have a particular extension attached to them, such as the antivirus uh, extension. Or um, all network security groups attached to subnets can't have a certain range of ports configured on them. So there's a lot we can do here, uh, but we want to make sure that we are putting policies in place to ensure that that's happening. Not that we don't trust our organization, but again, it's, it's new technology, and we just want to make sure that those controls are in place uh, to protect ourselves um, and to manage cost. Uh, which brings us to Azure policies. So Azure policies are basically rules to audit, configure, or deny the creation of Azure resources. Um, there are several pieces that we deal with when we're managing Azure policies. The first is the policy definition, uh, which is just the conditions under which a policy is enforced. So this is the policy. And just similar to RBAC uh, definitions, it's a JSON document. We're going to take a look at these. Um, within that, though, we can parameterize these policy definitions. So we can create parameters, uh, which really just generalizes a policy definition. Um, so an example where we might use this, and we're actually going to see this in the demo. Um, when we're managing resources in Azure, we can add tags to them. And a tag is really just a key value pair. Um, and just metadata, basically. IT depart or like department IT, or region West US just metadata on our Azure resources. Um, and it's a very simple concept, but it's uh, insanely powerful because having your resources tagged allows you to do things like query a specific set of resources or look at like consumption, like how much are, you know, how much is this region using in Azure? How much does this region cost us? When we have these tags on these resources, it allows us to pull that information much more easily. Um, so I might create a policy that enforces a tag, uh, but if I've hard-coded the values for that tag, like department IT in that policy, I can only use it once. Uh, or, you know, wherever that, that specific, those specific values apply. Rather than hard-coding those values, I can use parameters, and now I have a generalized policy that I can apply to a bunch of different places, giving it the values for the tags once I apply it. Um, so that's what the parameter pieces are. And then once we have the definition and we've got the parameters all worked out, we basically assign it. Um, and policies can be assigned to a management group, which is a collection of subscriptions. Um, it can be applied to a subscription or the resource group level. So if I've got something I want to enforce, like I don't care where your resources are at. Like I just don't care. 
wherever we're building stuff, these policies must apply. I can assign that to a management group. As we spin up subscriptions and those subscriptions become part of that management group, that policy is just going to filter down. However, I might have some really specific policies that only apply to maybe uh, one group. Um, so I've used role-based access control to give that group access to this resource group. I now want to apply those policies to that resource group so that they're only affecting that group under that resource group. So again, uh, policies can be scoped to management group, subscriptions, or resource groups. Um, so when we look at the policy definition, we also want to th we've also got this concept of effect. And that is what the policy is going to do once it's evaluated. Um, I've got four on the screen here. There's a couple others um, kind of outside of the scope of this talk. Uh, so the first one is audit. And, and this is kind of where you want to start. Um, because policies can, you know, really introduce some very tough love. You know, like, hey, I'm trying to create some stuff and you're just denying me. Or, hey, this stuff used to work and now it doesn't. Uh, what we can do with the audit effect is define our policies. So an example might be, you know, we've already come through a couple, but like network security group must not allow this port and all resources must have a tag that looks like this, et cetera. And then we can apply these policies to our uh, subscriptions or multiple subscriptions or resource groups and really just audit what's going on. Like how are we currently configured against these policies? Like is everything uh, compliant or do we have room to improve. And then with that report, you know, you haven't really stopped anything, you haven't really halted production, but you, you, you know, you have now a report that allows you to go and kind of work through those, um, those policy configurations. Uh, the next one would be append. And this is kind of like the soft love part, like, hey, I see you're trying to create a resource and we want to make sure all resources are tagged, but I don't see the specific tag on your resource. Rather than denying the creation of this resource, I'm just going to go ahead and append the tag for you. So I'm going to let you through, but I'm going to, I'm going to kind of put your, your, your resource in the proper configuration. The next one would be to de deny, which is the absolute opposite. I see you're trying to create a VM, and you've attached a network security group to the subnet, and you've opened up all these ports, and we just, we're not going to deal with that. I'm denying the creation of this resource go, you know, resubmit the request in the proper configuration. Whether that, you know, whether you're using PowerShell or the portal or a resource manager template, go reconfigure that such that it meets this policy. The fourth one is deploy if not exists. And, and this one's pretty cool. Um, and, and I, I, I want to call out one specific thing about it. Um, I don't have a demo or anything of it, but we've got some pretty good documentation on it. And what deploy to, if not exists does is, uh, if, let's go with the, like the VM extension uh, scenario. Like, I see we've got a VM here and you didn't add the um, antivirus extension to it. I'm gonna go ahead and add that for you. But what happens with deploy if not exists, it's got some very specific configuration. What it does is it doesn't just intelligently know that we need to deploy the extension. It actually triggers an Azure Resource Manager template so it evaluates the policy, determines the extension's not there, and then triggers a resource manager template to remediate that. So it's really up to the operator to build that logic. Um, and, that, and that's the reason I'm calling it out, because it can be easy to be like, oh, hey, we've got this thing. It's just going to take care of me, you know, no matter what my situation is. But there is some work to do on our part to define what that remediation is, and that's the execution of an Azure resource manager template. Um, so I've got a, just a little graphic up here that shows um, a policy definition. We're going to take a look at some in the, de in the um, demonstration. But so basically how it works is we've got an if statement. So in this case, and, I, and there's a lot going on there, and I know JSON's not like super easy to read, but what we're saying is if a tag that has these values, which they're parameterized, if it does not exist, then... I want to append it, so this is the effect right here, and I want to append it with this, which is basically the tag. So if this tag doesn't exist, append the tag. So that's a policy. We can kind of dig deeper on that, and we've got these things called policy initiatives. And what a policy initiative is, it's a very simple concept. It's just a collection of policies. 
So rather than having to manage a bunch of policies, maybe I just want to in manage an initiative, which is just a bunch of policies, but it's a way to manage as a single unit. So example might be, maybe I've got a group that's really concerned about cost, and they've built a bunch of policies to manage cost. Uh, rather than managing all of those individually, they just drop it into an initiative called you know, cost or whatever you want to call it, and then they can, they can assign just that initiative. Finally, before we get, uh, jump into the demonstration, as you saw a couple slides back, you know, policies are written in JSON. Um, we've got a really nice repository that has just a ton of examples of policies. There's also a bunch of policies built in that you can also, you can dig into those and look at the JSON. Uh, but definitely, once you get into this, I would recommend, you know, checking out this repository, finding something that kind of matches, like, kind of where you're going, like, hey, that looks close. You can then pull the policy definition out, the JSON, and just kind of, like, tinker with it to, to use that to match your needs. Which brings us to the demo. So the scenario here is that Tailwind Traders wants to manage resource tags and cost with Azure Policy. Um, so I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to, we're going to, very similar to the last demo, we're going to use the portal to assign a pre-created policy. Um, we're going to use some PowerShell to create a custom policy. And then uh, we're just going to quickly, it's super duper simple, but create a policy initiative. All right. Um, I also wanted to just quickly take a look at management groups. This is also super duper simple, so we'll just spend a couple seconds on it. Uh, but if I click in on a management groups, um, a management group is just a collection of uh, subscriptions. Let me do that again, make it a little easier to see. So I've clicked on management groups, and in here I've got a management group called Any Peters Internal. And then I've got two subscriptions in there. If I wanted to add a subscription, I could just simply add, this, add, this, add the subscription right here. And then any policies or role-based access control that I've got targeted at that management group, that new subscription just, just assumes. So now let's click into policy, and I'll just kind of do a quick tour before we get into the demo. Um, so up here, we've got overview, getting started, compliance, and remediation. Not really going to really look at any of these in, in this demo. But for instance, this compliant piece is where you would go and gather those reports if you're enforcing audit policies. And again, those policies are just taking inventory and seeing kind of how you stack up against your policies. Uh, we then have uh, assignments and definitions. That's where we're going to spend most of this demo. And then finally, we've got blueprints, which we're going to see in the next demo. Uh, so let's click in on definitions. And you can see that we've got a bunch, I mean, there's, there's quite a few in here, uh, built-in policy definitions. Um, across the top here, we've got definition types, so initiative and policy. Um, we manage policies and initiatives in the same place here. Um, under types, we've got custom and built-in. So this is really important, particularly if you're creating your own policies. So like if I click on custom here, I have no custom policies in this subscription. Um, we're going to change that here in a moment. Categories, we've got stuff organized by categories. When we create an initiative, I'll create a new category of cost, and then we can search through this stuff. Um, so let me just, um, let me just create a policy. So what I've done here is I've just searched for tag, and we can see that a couple have come up apply tag in its default value, and then enforce tag in its, in its value. So let's just focus in on those two. And so really what we have here is a very similar policy with a different effect. So apply tag is going to be append, where enforce tag is going to be just deny. So we need to determine what do we want to do in this situation. Like, I want to create a policy that makes sure that, that all resources have a specific tag. Do I want to add that on? Or do I want to deny the creation? For this demonstration, let's just go ahead and add that on. So we're going to do apply tag and its default value. Now we can come in here and take a look at the definition. And this is actually the same um, JSON that I had on my slide. So again, we've got the if statement. If the tag doesn't exist, then we want to engage the effect append. And we want to add the tag. 
Um, there's also a couple parameters in here, which is the tag name and the tag value. If you recall, a tag is just a key value pair, so department IT. So this looks good. This is, this is the policy that I want to apply. So I'm going to go ahead and assign this. And I'm just going to do a resource group, but again, we can do it at the management group level, the subscription level. So let me go ahead and grab my subscription. Um, and then the resource group level. And I've got a resource group already created called Policy Demo. And I'll do Select. Um, and then I've got the parameters. So I need to give the tag a name. So I'll just do Department. And we'll just do an, a value of IT. All right, so that looks good. So let me just go ahead and assign this policy. If I come back in here to assignments, I should now be able to see it. Yep, apply tags and its default values. There's some other assignments in here. So we've got solutions built into Azure that use Azure policies to, to drive their solutions. Uh, one is Azure Security Center. It's almost entirely driven on, uh, on policies. And that's what some of this other stuff is here. Um, so I've applied this to this resource group. Let me now go ahead and create a storage account. And I'm using storage accounts just because they uh, create pretty quickly. Oh, actually, let me do something else here. Create a resource, storage account. I need to grab the right resource group because I applied that at the resource group level. Storage account name, doesn't matter. Well, it needs to be unique, but for the, for the demonstration, once it's unique, it doesn't matter. Um, and then notice here now, uh, if I go to advanced, or let's just go to tags, I'm not giving the storage account a tag. I'll go ahead and review and create it. Validation passed. I'll go ahead and create it. All right, deployment is underway. And hopefully that just takes a couple seconds. If not, we'll move on and, and, and come back. And I'll click this two more times. All right, no worries. So we've applied a, a, a policy that, that exists in the system. So pre, predefined policy. The next thing we want to do is like build a custom policy because ultimately this is what you're, you're going to end up in a situation where like there's a lot of good stuff there, but we've got our own custom needs. Um, so let's look at, at how we're going to do that. And what we're going to do here is something very similar, but I want to apply a new policy that does the same thing. It applies a tag, but only to a specific resource type. So what we just did there is going to tag any resource. I want to build a policy that only tags storage accounts. Um, and for that, we're going to use some automation. Let's just see if this thing is done. So there it is. Now, if I click in on the uh, storage account, you can see that a tag has been de applied with the values that I gave to the parameters of the policy. So that's pretty cool. So next, we're going to look at some uh, automation here. So let me just set myself up. And let me just run this thing. Uh, basically, what I have here is a simple script. I'll just run through that real quick. And it's going to do a couple things. I just I packaged a couple parts of this demo into a single script. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a resource group. So I've got the command new az resource group. I'm then going to create a new policy a definition. So I've got this a command new AZ policy definition. And there's a couple things in there, but essentially what I'm doing is giving it the location of my policy uh, definition. And again, this is that JSON document. And so it's very similar to the last one we saw, but I've got a couple things in here. So if all of, so we didn't see all of before. So what I'm saying here is if all of these are true, and that means the tag does not exist, so exist equals false, and the type, so that's the resource type, equals whatever I give this parameter. In my demo, I'm going to give it a storage account. So if the tag doesn't exist and the resource is a storage account, 
go ahead and append the tag. So in my PowerShell script, I'm creating the definition. I'm then assigning it, and this is where I give some of those parameter values. So uh, the tag is going to be cost center, and the value is going to be headquarters. Um, and then I'm creating the policy assignment with the resource group. So just a couple things uh, all wrapped up. Oh. All wrapped up in that one script. So again, creating the resource group, creating the policy definition, and assigning that policy definition. Give that a second to complete. And there we go, it's been created. And so the next thing I'm gonna do, let's just uh, validate that that resource group was created. So there it is, policy demo custom. The next thing I'm gonna do is just use the Azure CLI to create a couple of resources in that group. The first thing I'm creating is a storage account. And then the second one that I'm creating, I'm just gonna go ahead and open up a new terminal here is uh, an Azure Container instance. Now, the Azure Container instance doesn't matter here. All I wanted to do is, is just create some resource that's not a storage account. Uh, so again, using this custom policy, the result, what I'm hoping is that my storage account is tagged, but the container instance itself is not tagged. All right, so there's my two resources. So let's look at the container instance. And we can see here we have no tags. However, let's look at the storage account. And we can see that we have the tag cost center and headquarters. Now, it's not a super duper exciting uh, demonstration, but, but really, you know, the, the, the point of that was that I had some needs uh, that were not pre created using, that, that weren't, that couldn't be facilitated by the pre created policy definitions, and I needed to go create my own policy definition. So we are going to have to dig into the weeds of some JSON, uh, which is the reason that we put that slide in, uh, pulling out that repository where we've got a bunch of examples. I mean, you're going to have to get in there and whittle with that stuff and, and kind of craft the policy the way you want it, get it imported, get it assigned, um, and then you should be good to go. Um, and then finally, what I wanted to do was talk about initiatives. So I've clicked on policy. I'm going to go back into definitions. And then we've got this button, initiative definition. Let me go ahead and click on that. Um, so I can assign my initiative, again, at the management group, subscription level, or a resource group. I'm going to go ahead and... Not sure why I can't get that at the, Let me try that again. Definition location, there we go. Grab my management group, give it a name. So what I'm gonna do here is create an initiative that contains two policy that basically limits the size of storage accounts or virtual machines that can be created. So I'm just gonna call it like uh, SKU. And then I'm gonna do a search for SKU. Here's my storage account, uh, allow storage account SKUs and allow virtual machine SKUs. And then right here in the portal, I can go ahead and uh, There we go, I need to select the subscription, sorry about that. I can now go ahead and select the SKU of the storage account that I want to allow in my environment. So let's just say like premium LRS. Same thing for virtual machines uh, for the subscription. What size virtual machines do I want to allow? And I can multi-select on these. Boom, and so now I've got a single initiative that contains multiple, multiple policies that I can manage as a single entity. So if I come in here and do definition type, initiative, let's do custom, there's my SKU initiative, multiple policies inside of it. I can go ahead and assign that uh, to a resource group. Um, 
and, I, and I, I, won't, I won't finish this out. I'm not going to walk through the rest of the demo. What I really wanted to uh, demonstrate was just the ability to kind of package multiple policies inside of that initiative. Um, so we've covered role-based access control, securing access, fine-grained controlled, fine-grained access to our Azure resources. We've looked at policies, ensuring proper configuration of our resources. Um, we can audit our environment. We can get really tough and deny the creation. What we want to do now is look at this at scale. And to do that, we're going to talk about something called Azure Blueprints. Um, and as I mentioned, Azure Blueprints is currently in preview, um, generating lots of excitement. Um, so Azure Blueprints really, they allow us to do actually quite a bit more than just managing role-based access control and policy at scale. What Blueprints allow us to do is really, kind of like the word indicates, create a blueprint of how we want our subscriptions configured. Um, and it's actually pretty neat. We can actually create blueprints, like this is what a subscription looks like, and then spin out new subscriptions from that blueprint and those subscriptions, are gonna, those subscriptions are gonna be configured in the way that you have your blueprint configured. So an example might be like, maybe you've got a service that you're selling, and that service is based on Azure, and inside of that service, you've got a, a particular application. And every time somebody buys that service or maybe internally spins up that service, rather than keeping it in like a resource group or something, you actually wanna spin up a whole new subscription for that instance. And inside of that subscription, you need to make sure you've got three resource groups, um, an Azure SQL database, a container instance, some other stuff, uh, proper role-based access control, and then policies in place. You can define all of that stuff in a blueprint and then just create the subscription from that blueprint and boom, you're gonna have all that infrastructure in place, the access control in place, and the policies in place uh, using an Azure Blueprint. So Azure Blueprints allow us to create uh, four things. Um, in defining an Azure Blueprint, and we're going to take a look at some, we can define the resource groups that I want in my subscription. And you can also apply a Blueprint to an existing subscription, uh, just to, to make that clear. Um, I can also load into uh, my Blueprint an Azure Resource Manager template. Is anybody using Azure Resource Manager templates or ARM templates as they might be known? Oh, nice. Quite a few hands. Uh, so I can define in my blueprint, create these four resource groups, and then run these eight resource manager templates. And what a resource manager template allows you to do, it's basically a deployment uh, technology. It deploys resources into my environment. So you know, create these resource groups, create these resources using these templates. Then uh, this fourth bullet point, apply these policies to those resource groups. And then the last bullet point here, and ensure that these role-based access control uh, definitions have been applied to the appropriate users and groups. So really allowing me to blueprint out exactly what my subscription uh, should look like. Uh, because Azure Blueprints are in preview, uh, there's a couple things just to make note of, and, and this, that's what this slide is just about. Um, we do have just, in fact, I had to update the slide today, uh, just last week, we released a new PowerShell module for Azure Blueprints, but uh, right now, all it does is assignment of Blueprints. You can't create uh, Blueprints with the module. That will be coming at a later time. There's also a community script called Manage Azure RM Blueprints, and that's what this link is about right here. With that script, we can create and assign Blueprints. Um, Azure has uh, all of the REST APIs, the Azure REST APIs for Azure Blueprints, are in place. Uh, so in my demonstration, we'll see that I've written some scripts to both create and assign Azure Blueprints. I've done that through the Azure REST API. Um, but we'll, you know, it's in preview. We're, we'll see uh, improvements around the automation capabilities. And then as we'll see, the portal functionality of Azure Blueprints is, is, is fully baked. Everything is there and, and it looks pretty good. Uh, which brings us to the last demo, which is Azure Blueprints. And, and basically the scenario is that like, uh, Tow and Traders is, is happy with um, their policies and access control, but really want to um, deploy these at scale. And additionally, they want to create some infrastructure. They really want to just, just like we've been talking about, create a blueprint for an application that they're deploying in their, their environment. 
And we'll see what they've done there. Uh-oh. Just bear with me. There we go. All right, so I'm back in the Azure portal. I'm going to click back on policies and click on blueprints. I'll click on blueprint definitions. And let's just take a look at the Tailwind Trader uh, blueprint definition. I'm going to call out a couple other things here. Um, so within this blueprint, we've, within a blueprint, we've got this concept of artifacts. And these are the things that we want to create. So this blueprint here consists of a couple different artifacts. We've got two resource groups. So you can see kind of the resource type over here. So the first one is line of business app. Inside of that, I've got another artifact that's an Azure Resource Manager template called Vote App. Um, I then have another resource group called Container Instances, and I've got two policies applied to that resource group. So if I was to deploy this blueprint to a subscription, two resource groups would be created. This template would be run, which just creates a container instance that has an application running in it. And that container instance would be created inside of this resource group. And then two policy definitions would be created, not definitions, two policies would be applied to this resource group right here. Now, you might be looking at this going, well, hey, that's, you know, that's cool, but I can do all of this with scripts. You know, I could build all of this myself. What is the value of Azure Blueprints? Like, what is the value out of Blueprints over here? And really, it's like, if you think about it, if I wrote a script to do all of this, I would execute it against Azure. Uh, maybe I've got the script on my local machine. I executed it against Azure. But I don't really have a connection between that script and what's in play there. So I don't know, like, what version of the script was run. There's no, like... Azure's not aware of where it's at in terms of what was run in, as, part of, as part of the automation. Well, notice here that this blueprint has a latest published version of two. Um, so really, with, you know, using a blueprint, not only do we have kind of the definition of what we're deploying into our, research, or into our subscriptions right in the portal right here, but we can version this stuff and kind of track all of that stuff internal to Azure versus having to do it you know, build my own system with scripts and whatnot. In fact, if we look at published versions here, if I click on version one, notice that I've got two, the, the two resource groups that we just talked about, the template, but I only have one policy being applied. Whereas if I go to version two, this thing has been revved with another policy. Now, if we look at my subscriptions, let me go ahead and just group these by subscription. Notice here that I've got one subscription, and yep, there's the two resource groups. And if I click into my line of business app, yep, there's the application. In fact, I was wrong. It's a container instance and an Azure Cosmos database that's being deployed with a template. And I can see that I have another subscription here. So that's my production subscription. I have another subscription here that's test. And yep, there's my container instances. Uh, resource group, and there's my line of business app resource group, and I can click in on that thing, and there's my two resources as well. But let's go back and look at the policy assignments, and I will call out something cool here. Let me just filter this down to just my subscriptions. All right, so there's my two. So I've, I've got a single blueprint assigned to two subscriptions. Let's look at my production, my production subscription. If I click in on here, notice that version one of that blueprint is assigned. However, if I go to my test subscription, version two is assigned. So again, kind of coming back to some of the value of policies. Like if I was doing with this with scripts, I would just have to manage all that versioning and kind of keeping track of that myself, whereas Blueprints really brings to us a solution for like uh, a very uh, modern solution for managing how we're deploying resources and controlling access to those resources and controlling policy at scale. So using something like Azure DevOps, for instance, which is a continuous uh, 
uh, a build or Azure, Azure Pipelines rather, which is a service within Dev, Azure DevOps, I can do something like store these blueprint policies or these blueprints in source control, <clears throat> make a revision to them, um, and then automatically deploy that to my test environment. Have somebody go in and manually, you know, validate like, hey, everything looks good in this test environment. Um, we're now ready to like upgrade this thing or provision this in our production environment and using my continuous deployment pipelines, go ahead and, and, and make those final actions to bring that to production. And that's exactly what I've done here. So I actually have an Azure DevOps pipeline configured that has deployed this blueprint to my test environment. Um, if you haven't seen uh, Azure DevOps deploy or Azure pipelines, release pipelines, uh, basically, it's a task runner. Uh, let me do this. Let me edit this thing. So if we look at the task runner, basically, it's uh, deployed the, the, the blueprint to my subscription and then assigned that to my test environment. And what we can see here is that using an Azure release pipeline, I can build gates such as this was automatically deployed to my test environment, however, not my production environment. Uh, what happens now is somebody needs to go validate that, make sure that the policy looks good, or I'm sorry, the blueprint looks good, the resource groups are in place, the policy looks good. I can then come in and we can see that my production environment is pending approval. I can come in and approve this. Yep, that looks good to me. Hit approve. And then ultimately what we'll see is that in this environment, my production environment will automatically update to that new version of the policy or the blueprint. So Azure Blueprints brings us this sophisticated way for defining the configuration of our uh, subscriptions. And that sophistication allows us to do things like integrate with continuous integration, continuous deployment systems, and really bring a new level to how we're um, managing and deploying our subscriptions. So that is Azure Blueprint. So we've looked at controlling access to our environment using RBAC uh, role-based access control. Uh, we've then dug in on how to control access or control the configuration of our environment using policies. And then finally, how to manage that at scale and even further do things like manage how we're deploying uh, resources across multiple subscriptions using blueprints. Um, we do have, if you haven't heard of Microsoft Learn, um, this is our new training system that we have uh, built. It's kind of come out of our docs platform. It's an interactive uh, learning mo uh, platform for not just reading docs and managing or in running the commands in docs, but using Learn, we actually spin up a sandboxed Azure subscription so that you can actually play around with Azure without actually using your own subscription or even having to provide a credit card. Uh, we do have a role-based access control lab available in, on the Learn platform. Um, and then we talked about a bunch of technology, so we were only able to like briefly, briefly scratch the surface uh, we've got docs on governance, role-based access control policies, and blueprints. Um, the slide deck and all of the scripts that I ran are available. Here's the links for those. Um, I appreciate you coming out. Please uh, take the time to fill out your evaluations. Mm -hmm.